Today I'm going to be talking with you briefly about ways in which you might be using punishment without even realizing that that's what you're doing. And so let's just jump right into it. So oftentimes we use nice words like consequences or um, you know, learning opportunities or things like this to describe something that is actually just punishment. Um, it's like lipstick on a pig, right? Like punishment is punishment and um, punishment is defined as using, you know, either giving yourself, you're giving your child something negative that they don't want, um, a consequence, um, or taking away something that is pleasurable to them. So these are things that we kind of do and we convince ourselves that it's not punishment, um, that we're like teaching our child a lesson or that we're, um, you know, doing the right thing when in reality what we're doing is using punishment. So um, one of the, one example of a way in which you might be using punishment without even realizing it <clears throat> is like I said, giving a consequence for a behavior that you don't like. So if your child hits their brother, for example, and you tell them that they have to, um, you know, I don't know, I actually have a hard time thinking of examples because this is not how we do things in my family. So, um, you know, it, you might say that he has to clean up his brother's toys for him as a, as a consequence for his behavior. Or, you know, maybe your child broke a rule and you feel that there needs to be a consequence for that, that is punishment. So just replace the word consequence with punishment and you know that that is a way in which you are using punishment without really owning the fact that that's what you're doing. Um, another example would be taking away a toy or a game or an activity that your child is doing or playing with or engaged in when they do a behavior that you don't like. So. Certainly there are safety issues. There are times when you need to remove a toy because it's not being used safely, but that's a really different thing than I don't like the way you did X or I don't like that you broke this rule or I don't like that you said this word or phrase, therefore I'm going to take away the fun thing that you're doing. That's different. Um, that's different than you're not playing with that safely, therefore I'm going to be the grown-up in charge, I'm here to keep you safe, and so I'm gonna take it away because you're not being safe, that's different. Um, you know, some of this is really in the delivery, right? Like some of this is really in, if your uh, intention and your energy around the situation is one that is punitive, then that's a punishment. But if it's like, you're not being safe, I'm gonna take that away, or you're not being safe, so we're gonna go over here where we can play safely. That's different than, you know, I don't like that you said that bad word, therefore I'm gonna take away the game. That's, those are different things. But taking away something pleasurable when your child does something that you don't like or that is breaking a rule, that's, that's punishment. Um, another example, this one is really common, is giving your child a timeout. So a timeout is a punishment period, full stop, end of sentence. A timeout is a punishment. And I think this is still really commonly used in sort of modern day parenting, unfortunately, but when you give your child a timeout, you're withdrawing your attention from them. And we've been taught this from behaviorism and you know from these old theories of, of child behavior, but the reality is like now we know more about child's brains and brain development and emotional development and emotional intelligence. And so we know that taking away your, your attention and your love in a time of distress is actually really harmful. Um, I can do like whole trainings on this, but, uh, but just to highlight this, the, the thing that needs <clears throat> to happen here is really a big shift in thinking about what behavior means and what what your child's really doing when they act a certain way and then when they act in a way that you don't like. So one kind of overarching way of thinking about this and shifting the way you think about this is that behavior is a form of communication. So when your child does a behavior, they are trying to communicate something. So if they're playing nicely, they're communicating that they are well regulated, they're feeling good, they're calm. But if they're behaving in a way that you don't like, 
or that is whiny or cranky or mean, they're communicating a need. There's some kind of need underlying that behavior. And so it's really important to look at behavior as a form of communication and as and, and negative behavior as kind of a cry for help. So that's one big caveat. The other big caveat is, or, or shift in thinking, is that if your child could do better, they would do better. So if they, when they know better, they do better, right? But when they are acting in ways that are unpleasant or unkind or that you don't like, they actually can't do any better than that in that moment. And I know that that's a really hard mental shift for some parents to make because we were raised in this way of thinking that children are doing it on purpose or that they're trying to manipulate us or all these things because that's how our parents viewed us, right? Like that's how our parents viewed our behavior. And so we think that that's what's actually going on when in reality, now we know all this new information about the brain. And so we know that when kids act unkind or out of control, it's actually something going on in their nervous system and in their brain, and they don't actually have the capacity to change what they're doing. So one of the objections, the most common objection I hear when I talk about eliminating punishment and consequences from your parenting repertoire is, how will they ever learn? If I don't implement a consequence, how will they ever learn how to behave right? How will they ever learn that that's not okay? But what I want to highlight for you here is that what think about what you're really teaching them. Like if you if you can accept the reality that if they could do better, they would do better, and that the reason they're not behaving the way you want them to behave is because their brain will not let them do it in that moment. So they literally cannot do it. So if you then punish them in that moment, what are they actually learning? Are they learning how to behave better or are they learning that boy when i when my nervous system gets out of control mom doesn't have my back when my nervous system's out of control and i can't control my behavior then i get in trouble that's really what's going on there and so what you're teaching them really is that you don't have their back unfortunately that's what you're teaching them is that you don't have their back and children who receive frequent punishments for their behavior get really good at hiding their behavior they get really good at lying about their behavior. They don't necessarily get really good at the things we want them to learn, which is how to regulate their behavior, regulate their emotions. They don't get good at owning their mistakes because if they know that if, if they fess up to what they did wrong or say this, this happened because I was feeling this, if they don't, or they, you know, they don't own their, they don't learn how to own their mistake because they know that if they do that, they're gonna get in trouble. So they know that if they are honest about what they did, they're gonna get in trouble. So that's what they learn. So, so they're not learning how to own their behavior. They're not learning how to be honest. And they're not learning how to properly apologize because that whole opportunity gets shut down by you might not even know that they did the behavior because they got good at lying to you about it or they got good at hiding it. So I know this is uncomfortable. This is an uncomfortable conversation to be having, but I want to encourage you to, to examine your parenting behavior a little bit and ask yourself, like, are you doing some of these things? Like, are you operating under a belief that you need to implement a consequence, you know, that there's behavior and then there's consequence, behavior and then consequence. Is that how you're operating? Are you using timeout as a way to let your child know that their behavior is not okay with you? And does that, how does that feel? Like when your child's sitting in a timeout and crying and begging you to get up, like how does that feel for you? Because that's really a, a real barometer of, of how we're doing as parents is like, how does that feel? Does that feel like the right decision? And is, you know, and are these things that you're doing teaching your child the kinds of things you want to be teaching them? So I could go on on this topic for hours, but I will leave you with these little nuggets. Let me know if you have questions and I'll see you soon.